Hey guys, welcome back to Universe X, and today we are actually going to go over Nami. Uh, a lot of people after my last video, just ranking like what I think is going to be top tier next format, were like, hey, where is Nami? Like, uh, I got a comment or two on YouTube, some people had in the Discord. So I was like, you know what? Let's actually circle back around and uh, talk about the Nami deck coming out in OPO3 Pillars of Strength. So, with that being said, as per usual, if you want to help out the channel, all you got to do is like this video, maybe subscribe if you haven't already, hit the notification button so you never miss a beat, and uh, maybe even just comment, just so we can get more of a conversation going on. I try to respond to everything I can. So, and uh, yeah, we're just going to keep expanding, juggling these couple games, got some events coming up in the next couple months, I'm happy to uh, go into those in a later video, but yeah, One Piece Set 3 is coming out very soon, and it's going to be very very excited. So yeah, I think that wraps up about the intro. Just the normal stuff about going down the link tree and checking out all the different things I do here in Universe X. And then if you really, really want to do something special for me, go subscribe to my Dragon Ball Gaming channel, which will be in the description because I'm trying to get that to a thousand subscribers so I can really start pumping content on there with the monetization. And with that, let's hop into it. All right, so let's get to it. First and foremost, we have the Nami Leader. Um, this card is straight up just like with a alternative win condition, one of the first in this game. And it straight up says, as an additional rule, when your deck reaches zero cards, you win the match instead of losing it. Um, Dawn X1, when your opponent takes damage to their life through the attack of this leader, you may trash one card from the top of your deck. Okay, so this is actually pretty cool. Um, first and foremost, it's our first alternative win con, so now we just don't have to get down life, we just have to run out of deck. And um, on top of that, every time she does damage, you're going to trash a card from the top of your deck. This makes um, you know a 7k leader swing potentially just one card closer to your whole grand scheme. But outside of that alternative win condition, she, uh, she really doesn't really do too much. Um, as a leader, you know what I mean? Like, the, you're gonna start seeing that the cards are going to be more prevalent than the leader itself outside of that win condition. Now, I do have to say, this deck does consist or it does uh, considerably change because we lost Kabaji and Moji, which is the basically the one drop vanilla, and then the two drop that says if you have the one drop vanilla in play, draw two cards, trash one card. So, that one was a huge speed up to the deck because you'd be able to play that multiple times and potentially get 10 cards out of the world, like, well, eight cards out of the way overall. Um, just by seeing multiples of those. So that helps speed the deck up a lot. But uh, without those, people were wondering if the deck will still be the same. And I think the deck still does operate. It just doesn't have as fast of a win con like that one did. It got pretty interactive. Most of these cards will require you to deal damage or, uh, you know, like counter or do something like that. Whereas uh, Kabaji Emoji just kind of just, they just did things regardless of what your opponent's doing. So here you go. You've got uh, the next one. You've got uh, Kaya. And uh, Kaya is just on play, draw two cards and trash two cards from your hand. Sucks they keep putting things like this on 2k counters because we want to use the 2k counters. But overall, she's a very, very good card and she's going to help you filter. She's essentially a Mihawk on play and um, that's what makes her great. Next, we got Gaimon. Uh, when you take or when you deal damage to your opponent's life, so you may trash the top three cards of your deck. And if you do, place this character in the trash. So this is actually a pretty neat card. If you're playing against a deck that you know can't just like pop it on play, like you know red later in the game, playing Gaiman and then putting two on your leader and then swinging in with it isn't a bad play because you either force your opponent to go lower on hand, making it easier for your other attacks to go through later, or you deal damage, trash one card from the top of your deck, and then use this and trash three cards from the top of your deck. And you know, going off of four is a pretty good thing. You have to realize the math. You guys are putting five cards into your hand and then five cards into your life, which means your deck is now only 40 cards. You're gonna be drawing a card per turn and then these cards are gonna be doing their work. So the math actually isn't that bad when you really think about it, especially things that you're going down from 40, not the 50 that you would think, you know, making the deck. Um, now our next card is going to be Boodle. Boodle, um, and uh, he's a blocker, easy, but uh, when he gets KO'd, you can trash the top card of your deck, just more incremental self-mill. Next, you've got the OG Mihawk card, and I'm talking basically about cards that just are all going in on, uh, like most lists, most Nami lists will include these cards. There's some text, you can be a more extra card build, or variant build, you can be uh, more based on these character cards, but I'm just going over the cards that you see mostly in all of these. So, you got uh, Dracula Mihawk, he's from the starter deck, 
And uh, this guy's a little harder to play because, you know, he costs four. But uh, basically, he's got that Kai effect, or Kai's got his effect, but he's a Dawn 1. So he's going to swing for seven or 6k and then draw two trash two. If you land him and can have him survive and swing with him, excellent card. Otherwise, he's a 2k in hand. Uh, next, you've got Belle Mare. She's another four cost. When this character deals damage to your opponent's life, you may trash six or seven cards from the top of your deck. And on KO, you may trash three cards from the top of your deck. This is massive in this deck. Um, put two Dawn on her, swing for seven. I actually, just the, this is the one where if they don't have blockers, you just load onto her and swing because she is going to get seven cards off the top of your deck and your opponent is prioritized to destroy her. And when they don't, she's gonna be able to try to do it again. Blue has a lot of cards that can bounce they can interfere with small blockers. So you want to get her off the field, and when you do, three more cards. So overall, if she gets her effect off once, she is a fourth of your win condition, just resolving right then and there. So it's high priority to block her or to counter out of her, and it's high priority to get her off the field as soon as possible so she doesn't have a chance to do it again. This card is the definition of awesome, and honestly, it could have been an SR with how much it does for this deck. Um, moving past, we've got the Rush Usopp. Not in every list, but kind of like 50 to 70% of them, I'd say. Um, but he's got Rush and then Dawn X1. Uh, when this character deals damage to your opponent's life, you may trash the top seven cards from your deck. Very, very good. And because it has Rush, it is a little bit more expensive. It's four and it has to pretty much play five. So it's like the cost of a Rush Luffy. That being said, Rush Luffy was good for quite some time. So now Blue has a Rusher. And um, if you're playing the Nami deck, you're not gonna care about the damage it does. Um, otherwise, even other decks, you could potentially put this in and just know that you're going to try to swing on something on board. This could be like an, a slap shot to board. But for the most part, it's gonna be going in the Nami deck. Um, you play him, you can Dawn him up for two, so a total of six Dawn total, and you've got a 7K Rusher that can trash the top cards of your deck. So again, very, very impactful card. Uh, now you've got Zeph with the alt art, let him cook. His alt art's hilarious. But um, Zeph, five cost, 6k power, Dawn X1, so you already know he's gonna be a 7k going, which is, again, a magic number. When this character deals damage to your opponent, um, you may trash six, uh, seven cards from the top of your deck. So you're seeing these numbers go. And then on play, return up to one character with a cost of three or less the owner's hand, and you may trash two cards from the top of your deck. So this is actually really wonderful too. This guy's going to get things out of the way, potentially blockers. If you have like an Usopp on board already or a Bell Mir, playing this guy, to then bounce their only blocker to then pile on the rest of the Dawn to your Belmir or Usopp and then swinging is a beautiful combo. You can kind of see how these cards come together. Um, and then the last card in the list of cards that kind of help you with the self mill is a uh, Soga King. Soga King is just not only the, one of the secret rares with an excellent altar, but he's also the monger rare of next step. And uh, yeah, this card's name is also treated as Usopp. Very, very cool. That's gonna make more sense for like some of the cards, like I think Apple, Glue, whatever his like three stooges are, they can get an Usopp from the grave. Um, and then on play, return up to one character with a cost of six or less to the owner's hand, then draw two cards, trash two cards. Acceleration, filtering, pseudo removal. Very, very good. Um, very, very good card is sees play in pretty much every Nami deck. It's a good blue card in general, so this is powerful. Now, moving f after that, we're going off of cards that go for the uh, self-milling more, and now we're looking at a card that benefits from your grave being thick or your deck being small. Uh, this is a blocker, Carne. Uh, he's a 3k for 3 with 1k uh, counter, which is pretty good. But when you have 20 or less cards in deck, he's going to gain 3k power, allowing him to be a 6k blocker, which is a very good number for blocking in general. Uh, of course, you've got Mihawk. Mihawk is always here, just chilling, doing his thing. He's going to be a great top end. He is going to bottom deck cards, one of the blue cards, the bottom decks, and he's a huge body, hard to remove, hard to swing over. So in general, just a very good card because there are going to be times where you might want to put pressure on both ends, not just getting yourself down to zero cards, but also beating your opponent down because a lot of these cards are doing damage, and Mihawk is just a good top end for any blue deck. Now, real quick, we're going to go into the... Mystic TCG ad just because I want you guys to see my sponsor. Um, like I said before in plenty of videos, it's the best place to buy sealed product. Currently, you can pre-order set five on their website. And uh, yeah, it's going pretty well. You can also uh, pre-order the trio deck with uh, Law, Luffy, and Kid from Onigashima. There's a lot of stuff you can do, but when you get your sealed product, you can use the code UNIXTCG for 5% off. So don't hesitate, get this stuff before it sells off and we will jump into the extra cards right after. So let's talk about Mystic TCG, your one-stop shop for all your TCG needs. 
On the site, you can buy or pre-order plenty of sealed product for plenty of games. Just make sure though, if you're pre-ordering, to give it three to four months in advance to start looking because sometimes the product is indeed hot, supply and demand, you know? And then if you wanna buy singles, go on tcgplayer.com. There's gonna be a link in the description where you can buy for the best value. And if you want to sell cards or collections, you can message them on their Facebook site so you can get the best bang for your buck on any type of way you wanna buy or sell cards. And then while you're at it, you can use the code UNIXTCG at checkout to get even more of a discount. So hey, what are you waiting for? Check out Mystic TCG today. So moving on now. We are going to look at the uh, first extra card from here. We got Usopp's Rubber Band of Doom. Great name. I think this should have had a alt art, but no, seriously. It's a one cost counter. Up to one of your leader characters gains plus two power during this battle, then you may trash the top card of your deck. So uh, you're getting closer. And then this other one, uh, if it gets triggered, which is why you might want around four of it, draw one card and trash the top card of your deck, would essentially bring you two cards closer to your game plan. And I think that's actually pretty cool. Um, very, very good card, very, very simple. And then next, some people, a fair amount of people have Desert Spada, and Desert Spada is actually pretty cool as well. Now, normally, it's just going to give 2k power, rearrange the top three of your deck so you can have better draws on the next turn or off your draws if you're drawing more. Or potentially in this deck, you can, if you know you have a card that draws one, trashes one, things like that, you can set it up so that you draw the card that's most beneficial, and then yeah. Then, the trigger is the coolest part in this deck because you're drawing two and trashing a card from your hand. So once again, creeping yourself two cards closer to your win con. Uh, next, we got Gum Gum Giant Gavel, which is new to this set as well. Trash one card from your hand and you get your leader card. Up to one of your leaders gains 4,000 power for the battle, protecting yourself pretty well. And you may trash the top two cards of your deck. It says May, but uh, this is actually pretty cool because this is gonna allow you to do, this is like a better Gum Gum Rain. Well, I mean, it's not zero cost, but the point here is you can use this effectively as a blue leader without needing to trash or in this deck it just kind of goes brazy in general uh trigger is pretty good uh character with cost four or less to the understand not bad but not too great either four is kind of a dubious number for costs and then we're going to move over to love love beam from the starter deck the very first uh, blue starter deck very very good uh, counter up to one of your leader card or character cards gains 4,000 power for the turn then draw one card if you have three or less cards in the hand so basically once again good defense and you're gonna creep closer to your goal so you're seeing the thing almost every single card in this deck will draw or trash cards from the top of your deck and then lastly we got Sanji's peel off which straight up just says draw two cards and the trigger is using this card the main effect so pay three draw three cards or draw two cards um, there are gonna be turns where you know even if you stockpile this like if you've got a full set of dawn and you know you only have five cards left in deck just draw just draw six just draw six like just play three of these um but you're seeing how this goes so essentially yeah nami has the ability to play this alternative win con and really get it in but um it's gonna be up to see how the format reacts because the thing is once it lost kabaji and moji you have the ability to get ran over not quickly but you lost some of your inter uninteractive ways of drawing throughout your deck. So now most of your deck's things are gonna have to interact, which means they can be countered out of, blocked, uh, event carded out of existence, things like that. So let me know in the uh, description how you guys feel about Nami. Let me know if you guys think that Nami will still be a powerhouse. It does have its like locals wins and stuff in Japan. I haven't really seen it crop up terribly much since it got a little nerfed. But uh, yeah, let me know. Like, let's see if in uh, Global it's gonna have a bigger splash than it did post Kabaji uh, ban in uh, JP. So, yeah. But either way, I hope you guys liked the video. Um, we're gonna be going on to the other card games for a couple days, like Dragon Ball and Battle Spirits, and we'll circle back over to One Piece. Like I said, uh, pre-orders for set five have gone up on Mystic CCG, so make sure you use my code to get 5% off your orders there, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.